Well, good evening, America, and welcome to It's Happening Out. This is the world's most popular live gay television show. And of course, you know, it's 8 p.m. It's Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. And I'm your host and moderator, Al Ferguson. And we have a lot of interesting faces with us uh, in hosting tonight at It's Happening Out. And let me start with a special guest that we have first, and that is Doug Paget. He is pastor and executive director Director of Vote Common Good and has been traveling all over America. We're going to tell you a lot about this uh, special event that uh, Happening Out Television is sponsoring, but I'll wait until later in the show. Doug, welcome to It's Happening Out. Well, wow, what an honor to be here. You know, it makes me wonder, what have I been doing on my Wednesday nights? That's exactly right. Well, one of the reasons uh, you haven't been doing It's Happening Out is Doug, being a pastor, uh, very embracing, but he's the A in the LGBTQ community, or an allied uh, member. So uh, welcome uh, tonight. Uh, next up, I want to introduce you, America, to Kishai Chad. And he is a board member of Celebrate Orgullo. Did I get that right? Did I pronounce that right? You did. You did. Close enough. Yeah. Uh, um, Kishai is also fascinating to me. We have just met. Uh, I'm so looking forward to him being a host tonight at It's Happening Out because you're a sexual health educator. That sounds so much fun. How do I apply for that job? <laughs> experience. Oh. <laughs> Lots of experience. <laughs> the reads came out of your first sentence. So uh, we're very happy to be here. And we're also going to talk about uh, this mammoth uh, Latino and Indigenous Pride Festival that has started uh, and quite exciting. Uh, next up, um, a, a guest host tonight is Jay Rodriguez. And Jay is from our health field. How appropriate with COVID. Uh, he is a nurse. And in fact, he works in a clinic. Uh, Jay, you having trouble taking that yeah. mask off? Are you? I got it. I got <laughs> um, some uh, these clips. You're in mask constantly because Jay works in a clinic that has had lots of specialty with COVID-19. And you do all kinds of things, of course. And I've heard you do all kinds of things. And that was a good joke. And uh, <laughs> I understand you're also a gamer. And yep. your friends call you a nerd. You're a nerd? A little bit. Really? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty much a nerd. You're a nerd. Yeah, I mean... Let's be honest, I have a Triforce tattooed on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> it can't get much nerdier. Oh, you know, I'm starting to like gaming a lot more all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know why. And, of course, you've seen him before. He has hosted a number of times at It's Happening Out, and that's Mo Lurito. How you doing, Al? Mo is a law enforcement officer and some secret law enforcement uh, agency here in South Florida. I am forbidden and I would never cross Mo because I'm basically scared of him. <laughs> so I can't tell you where, but uh, how is it going, Mo? Welcome it, back. It's going well. There's nowhere else I'd rather be on a hump day with you, Al. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take that. I'm not sure just how to take, take it. that. Out. Just, take <laughs> just take it. Okay, we're off to the races. And finally, least and last is Dr. Ty Hauser. And Dr. Ty Hauser is my partner in crime at Gay Town Hall, and uh, he works uh, with me also. We deliver the news at Q News, and uh, he is a professor. I am legally obligated to say <laughs> doctor in front of his name. He's an English professor, a college English professor who has traveled all over the world. And by the way, we're going to also talk about this tonight. We're doing a big smackdown debate with the walk away and Americans from Trump gang. And Dr. David Hauser is one of those people representing the left. The Dr. Evening. Ty Hauser is your good friend. I'm not sure who David Hauser is. Yeah. Did I say David? <laughs> Did I say David? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, well, David, I told you last and least. So <laughs> that's, that's you just wanted more. me to keep my mask what, on the what, what can I say? <laughs> all right. Well, welcome to all of you. We are going to have a lot of fun tonight. This is an entertaining show. We're going to talk about a lot of interesting things. So thank you, America, for joining us. It's time to get started with It's Happening Out. You are watching, as I told you, the world's most popular live gay television show. So many of your stories are next on... It's happening out. This week on It's Happening Out. Join us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It 
all starts right now, live on It's Happening Out. Well, America, uh, we are a live, unedited show, which means anything can happen. You're going to see it all, and uh, and that may be going on right now. And uh, so any ridiculousness that comes out of some of these people's mouths, um, I'm probably going to make fun of it, but you're going to see it unedited. Uh, anything can happen as a result. And as I told you, this is the world's most popular live gay TV show. If you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and and ring that bell for updates and if you're on Facebook like and share us share the video or start a watch party you can do it right now it's super easy uh, watch this when viewing our live show in your app please click share after clicking share your screen should change and you can then click watch party on the next screen you can write text to your viewing audience and then click start watch party you've done it enjoy your party <clears throat> All right, well, let's begin with a couple of exciting announcements involving the Happening Out Television Network. Uh, join Happening Out Television Network at 5 p.m. this Thursday, if you're in South Florida, October 8th, right here at the Sunshine Cathedral, as we celebrate Vote Common Good. Uh, there's this little election going on and a debate tonight. Anybody heard about it? Big deal. Watch this. We were shocked by the fact that people of faith said, we want that person to be the president of the United States. And a lot of us said, we've got to do something about it. So we said, well, we've woken up and we now need to speak up and we need to stand up. And we asked people in making the common good their voting criteria, not their political party, not even a political agenda, to start with the idea that the common good drives you. And I believe as a Christian that my call is not to vote for my own self-interest. I should do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, even in my voting. So we need to be the ones who are going to voice that to other people. Well, Vote Common Good is an inspiring, energizing, and mobilizing movement that was started in January of 2020 for people of faith to make the common good their voting criteria and to pursue faith, hope, and love for a change on Election Day 2020 and prevent the re-election of Donald Trump. This 90-minute event is for people of all ages and political leanings and faith interest, a blend of rally, revival, party, and political meeting. And it includes its uniqueness. It includes musicians and poets and activists and more. And tonight we are joined by our special guest host at It's Happening Out, Vote Common Goods Executive Director, Doug Padgett, uh, to discuss the event. Good evening, Doug, and we're glad you're here. Well, Al, it's great to be with you. Um, in addition to all that, we live on a bus, uh, or at least have for the last number of months. Uh, we travel the country holding these outdoor rallies. We also do a lot of messaging campaigns and some other things. But the heart of it is traveling the country and asking people, especially faith voters, especially Christian voters, especially white evangelical voters, to do the right thing in this election. And uh, it's good to get out of the bus, of course, and to be here. And we look forward to being here in South Florida on Thursday and over in Sarasota on Saturday and St. Pete on Sunday. And all around the country. The event is really interesting. It will be held here uh, on Thursday, October 8th. It's outdoors here at Sunshine Cathedral, the largest queer church uh, in the world. And it's unique because it's not just a boring speech rally. Uh, there are entertainers and there are poets and there's motivational uh, things that go on. It's socially distanced correctly. Uh, masks are uh, done. And uh, it's an exciting event. It'll start at five o'clock it lasts for 90 minutes and it's designed to bring people uh, to the table uh, as you know in Florida and other states are in the same situation the brand new polls that are being released show it's 47 47 in Florida so approximately 7% are at play and an event like this vote common good is at play um, uh, Doug tell us a little bit about what will happen at the event well you know uh, as 
Ty might recognize, uh, nothing lasts longer than three minutes in our little rallies. Uh, so uh, these are these are quick they're quick hits uh, that we do at, the, at these events. Uh, there's music, short poetry, short speeches, um, really all designed to create a, a, a mosaic of of messaging that goes on. So if you're thinking I don't want to get stuck at some boring old political rally at you know five o'clock on a Thursday, uh, you won't. Come join us. It's uh, it's not that way. And join us online too. We have. You know, thousands and thousands of people who watch each of these online. So they're they're really worth it. I promise yeah. you. And Doug, you're you're a pastor, and uh, uh, now uh, some of the pastors I know are people like Jerry Falwell Jr. You're you're a pastor like that kind of pastor. No, I you know he. He prefers just to watch. I like to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> some people, good some joke, just sit Doug. In the good, good, right? Good, good <laughs> joke. Dream and imagine. Yes, exactly. And um, uh, that that would be a surprise because really you're the epitome from the religious community yeah. of what an ultimate A in LGBTQA can be because you're yeah. straight and you're an ally in supporting and also from the religious community wanting to propel uh, not only the straight community but also. Uh, the religious community and the LGBT community to get out and vote on November 3rd. Yeah, I mean, it's times where you feel like in the role that I'm in, you're either an A or an A-hole, right? <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and I really mean that. Like, I've spent my time as an evangelical pastor from Minnesota and spending a lot of time with other leaders around the country. Uh, there's a lot of people who just live their lives in ways that are mean. Uh, mm. No matter what, how you've been taught, no matter what your religious convictions are, and there's a lot of really religiously conflicted people you really don't have to be mean and you don't have to be exclusivist about anything. And, and if you are, I will just say as somebody who, for whom their faith matters and, and talking about God matters, God's not an exclusivist, right? So if you are, you're probably the one who's in opposition to God. And that's a difficult thing for a lot of people to hear. And we have to say it every single day because look, I'm telling you, the evangelical right, it lays a guilt burden on people mm -hmm. that if you're not in that community, it's hard to understand how deep it runs. Yeah. So part of the reason we travel, do meetings like this, are inclusive is because this is, for many of us, the kind of imagination that Jesus would have for the world. You know, it's a lovely message, especially to the LGBTQ community. One of the principal reasons why we're involved with Sunshine Cathedral, uh, we've helped um, organize and propel their uh, Sunday broadcast every Sunday live at 1030, and as many as 30, 33,000 people watch the broadcast, uh, which is amazing because uh, religion does not have to be a taboo word in the LGBT community and we don't have to buy into the lies that the evangelical right tell us all one one last thing that I wanted to ask Doug I and now you uh, we have 20 some days left before the election I understand that big bus of yours and all of the talent and performers that are doing this uh, you're gonna end up uh, someplace special on voting election day November 3rd where's that yeah you know we're here today in South Florida but 27 days from now because when you live on a bus you count every single day <laughs> we're gonna be parked outside the White House on November 3rd and uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time we're gonna start joining with others to start hearing the results. I want to remind everyone we're probably not going to have enough results by midnight on November 3rd, but uh, the truth is going to start to start to come in and we're excited to be out there and join all of you to join us in our watch parties that are going to be going on from the uh, lawn outside the White House. Well, Doug, we're very proud at Happening Out Television Network and especially at uh, It's Happening Out to help support this mission of uh, Vote Common Good. Boy, it sounds really good to me and it's designed to get you to come out uh, to vote and to change the direction that America has been running in. If you want to participate, you can do it socially um, and be present if you would like, or you can do it virtually online. Uh, this Thursday, October 8th, it begins at 5 p.m. Uh, and come out to Sunshine Cathedral if you're in South Florida. One last thing, I'm very excited about Pastor Doug Padgett being here tonight because you you know this is a gay show, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm aware it's of a gay this. show. Wait, there are gay people here? <laughs> There are gay people here, exactly. We're Where? the view. Everywhere I look. <laughs> there, exactly, everywhere he looks. Um, this is the view with a whole lot more testosterone, is basically what's going <laughs> on here. Testosterone? Now, watch, uh, watch, or, or low testosterone for some. Um, watch, <laughs> I love Keisha's face. Uh, watch carefully um, 
Doug tonight because he's yeah. going to be playing I'd Swallow That yes. and Shag Mary Chop and all kinds of fun things that this straight guy, this oh wait, the straight pastor guy <laughs> is going to be playing with us tonight. And he's definitely going to prove, oh yeah, I'm an ally. <laughs> okay, great. We're, we're really happy to see it. All right. Also uh, tonight, we want to bring attention that the Happening Out Television Network is a major uh, digital television sponsor of Orgullo. Uh, before we talk about this, watch this. Well, LGBT America, doesn't that fill you with pride? Happening Out Television Network is the digital television sponsor for Celebrate Orgullo. Tonight, Ki Shai Chad, board member at Unity Coalition and Health Promotion Peer uh, Navigator. Uh, uh, as I indicated, Ki Shai is a uh, sexual health educator. But most importantly, here tonight, participating as a host at uh, It's Happening Out uh, because of this uh, Latino and um, uh, Native American Pride Festival. Uh, Kishai, uh, again, welcome to It's Happening Out. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with Orgullo. Okay, so good evening, everybody. I'm happy to be here for the first time, and I am glad you all have tuned in. I am a board member of Unity Coalition. Um, it's an organization that has been in existence since 2002. It's Miami's Hispanic and Indigenous LGBT organization. And for the past 10 years, we've been able to provide a Celebrate Orgullo Festival, which coincides with Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, it's usually always the October 1st to the 15th. And we, all of us on the board, we're all artists, we're all entertainers, and we are giving a chance to not only celebrate, but showcase and support artists, whether it be singers, dancers, uh, photographers, poets. Um, this is something that is great for the community to not only showcase their talent, but just representation overall of and, the diversity of culture. And Keisha, this is an interesting Pride uh, Festival. First off, any Pride Festival in 2020 is interesting because there's mm -hmm. been so many cancellations. Yeah. Uh, Orgullo uh, continued on, and it's a combination of in um, in, in a live event and virtual event. And this is the first time uh, that the festival has done um, integrated virtual events. Uh, don't you think, uh, or uh, let me ask it this way, what do you think about the, the, uh, the chances are that many, many more people in South Florida, in Florida, and all over the country are going to watch what happens in this Hispanic and Indigenous Pride Festival that could never get here to South Florida and now for the first time ever, COVID has allowed that opportunity. Are you excited about that? Yes, because even though we have the pandemic occurring, it's far more convenient for people to watch from their mobile device or from their computer. Um, and they get to see people share parts of their culture and aspects of who they are that they may not have been exposed to. Because we all know Hispanic and Latino and indigenous people, right? Hopefully, we, you do, um, but there are a lot of people who aren't aware of the diversity. When you think of Latin America, there's so many different countries, there's so many different cultures and ethnicities within the Hispanic community. You know, uh, Kishai uh, brings to attention not only the Hispanic nature of this festival, but mm -hmm. very fascinating America that you may not be familiar with is the indigenous celebration. Native American indigenous population in South Florida is really lucky and blessed because we have not only uh, with the Florida Everglades, we have the Seminole tribe of Florida and the Miccosukee tribe of Florida. And uh, if you're in Lincoln, Nebraska right now, you might not have heard of the Seminoles but yes, you have, because they are the largest business owner 
uh, Native American corporation in the world because mm. they own all of the Hard Rock casinos mm -hmm. and hotels and restaurants. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, I'm curious, one last question, Keisha. In your experience in participating with Celebrate Orgullo, what's been your single greatest personal moment, your personal best experience? Well, from the past or from this year? Whatever you want to tell me. <laughs> Um, I would like to say last year we did a gala at the Frost Museum at FIU in Miami and um, my good friend Melba De Leon, she received the Volunteer of the Year Award, I believe. She was recognized for her contribution um, for volunteering. She volunteers for every organization in South Florida and also um, we recognized the actress, my, her name slips my mind right now, but she is a, she plays Candy on Pose, and um, it was nice to meet her and interact with her, and it was it was just nice to see something of that caliber here in South Florida. Well, one last time, great, uh, Keisha. Uh, let's put up the uh, slide. Celebrate Orgullo. It is uh, mm -hmm. Orgullo. Yes, that Orgullo. I, yeah. I'm, I have difficulty with the word, but I'm getting better at it. Um, it's going on right now. And one of the reasons I'm very proud of our association and it's happening out with it is it is a model example of what the LGBTQ community can do all over America. You should look at this even in the peak of COVID-19 pandemic. We can still celebrate our pride. And mm -hmm. this mm. Hispanic and indigenous festival, pride festival, proves that that's the case. Congratulations to the community for putting this event on. Now, let's have uh, move on and have some fun of our own right here uh, tonight in the studio. Let's begin with the meme of the week. The meme of the week we're getting ready to show you is Lady Olena Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> Lady Ginsburg. Since last week, people have been joking that Donald Trump's catching COVID-19 was revenge from the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg, done in the style of Lady Olena Tyrell from Game of Thrones. So uh, let's see that meme of the week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we get it. Any thoughts on the meme of the week? Oh, I <laughs> hope it was Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I hope it was. Like, uh, <laughs> did y'all catch the uh, the beautiful little tribute uh, in the season premiere uh, last week at Saturday Night Live, where the the cast member that plays RBG uh, was just sitting in the audience, and they just came in and she just nodded. It was a beautiful uh, oh, moment. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I love Game of Thrones, too. Uh, let's move on and play our yes or no game. Now, most of the guest hosts tonight have never done this, and this is going to be interesting. It's called I'd Swallow That. Oh, it's un interesting because everybody at the table, except our professional drinkers, uh, which there are at least two at the table, uh, are uh, going to play I'd Swallow That. Uh, these are vodka shots. Our hosts are going to be asked four questions. If they agree, they are going to take the shot. If they disagree, they don't touch the shot. Everybody ready? Everybody understands. All right, here we go. Let's play I'd Swallow That. Question number one. I'd swallow that. Oh, Pastor Doug. Mm. <laughs> Slutty Halloween costumes are my favorites. Oh. Yes. Please. Mm. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All eyes are glued on Doug. I feel that way. <laughs> I assure you they are. Oh, okay. Great. Um, so, uh, let's start with you, Doug. It's obvious. Okay. You're, you're not, uh, <laughs> your religious training didn't zero in on slutty Halloween costumes? No, this time yeah, you? especially not, a, I mean, not my religious training, but just adult Halloween costumes. Like, in my world, uh, like, religious people get dressed up like that stuff all the time, right? They put on their <laughs> little costumes and do their, do their thing, but I just don't do a lot of adult yeah. costume parties, which one, is one of the things that, you know, the gay community has really helped. Yeah, well, and, and Doug, I, I don't know if you know, everybody at this table uh, knows, but you might not know, there's Christmas, you know, Jesus and, and everything, which yeah. we love, we love that, but our Christmas in the LGBT community is Halloween, so that's it. Um, Jay, uh, you took the shot, you like slutty Halloween costumes? I don't wear them, but they please me, so I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get enjoyment, so no complaints. Uh, you don't wear costumes at all? 
No, nah, I prefer to go naked. It's easier. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I don't trick or treat really. I haven't done it in a while. Anybody else uh, embrace slutty? How, I, I saw the shots, but anything anybody wants no, to say? Absolutely. About? It's like everyone on a drive has a harness and wings. It's like, come oh, on. Oh, that counts? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that was a Halloween no, costume. No, they don't need to be. I like drive the Thursday on the drive. Yeah, that's oh. Tuesday night. Right, exactly. Al, for, for the uninitiated like me, what is your slutty Halloween costume for this year? Uh, oh, know, girl, you don't want to see that? I, I saw it last year and I almost went blind. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just leave that sound okay. bite out on the table. <laughs> Let's move on to I'd Swallow That, question number two. Okay. I'd Swallow That. They're playing Billy Loomis in Scream. That is my favorite movie of all time. And just, ooh, uh, like, seductive bad guy. I, I, are, you, are you excited on the news that a uh, Scream 5 is coming? Yes. I and the whole the cast. I will be at the premiere. Yeah, the whole cast is, uh, is going to uh, reunite. Anybody else in terms of slutty? Uh, or, or, I mean, a, a, a character that turns I'm the most. I'm going to say the American Psycho. Can't remember his name. Um, oh, Christian Bale? Was it Christian Bale? Yeah. Sexy. Very sexy. Okay. All right. Let's continue uh, in uh, I'd Swallow That to uh, question number three, shot number three. I'd Swallow That. I love to binge horror movies with someone special. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's, that's about my life. <laughs> oh, All right. Holy I'm God. going to take the shot because I'm hoping for picture one. <laughs> but we know the reality. Any? I, know. <laughs> I prefer the reality. Like, I like watching horror movies alone. Really? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what on me. Like, you know, yeah. Really? Yeah. I have to force my boyfriend to watch them. He hates horror films, <clears throat> but he's a good sport. He sits with me and... He's been watching them so far. Yeah. This, this week, October. Uh, I told him October's horror movie month. We're watching horror movies every night. If he ever needs a break, a okay, uh, if he ever needs a break, oh, you just call me. I'll be over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, um, thirsty. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jay, I'm curious. Uh, boy for horror movie or no boy? I love horror. Well, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> I love horror movies, but it's good. It lets you get close to each other, so you can go and flight the easy. So camp. you're voting for oh, boy yeah. and horror movie. Yeah, okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right, um, uh, let's see, how many days is Halloween away? Uh, Jay, anymore. I'll give you my number. Um, <laughs> question number four, I'd swallow that. I'd swallow that. Today is International Lesbian Day, and there is a particular lesbian I really admire. Mm. Mm. I have so many friends that would kill me if I did not take this shot. Mm-hmm. Who? Uh, everybody took the shot. And somebody they admire. Just tell me real quick. My aunt. <laughs> Your aunt. Oh, sweet. Right. My sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. All right. Well, I'll get in trouble if I don't name, if I name a friend and miss another one. But I'm going to go with Jodie Foster. I love. Oh, her. oh, very nice. All right, Jay. Um, I have a cousin, but I have a cousin who's a lesbian. But lesbians are awesome. I went to P Town a few years ago, and it was. I think Baby Dyke Week, and I went to the boat slip because that's a bunch of places. It was awesome. Like, go lesbians. I love my lesbians. Most people go to P-Town for Bear Week. I missed that. I didn't get the invite. Yeah. I, I was a week late. Yeah. You went for Baby Dyke Week. Yeah. It was, I was a week late, okay. but I made some awesome that friends. Week. Um, for, uh, um, above everything else, well, I have to call out um, Amber Taylor from Gay Town Hall. Yes, but, but, but I have to say, Chef Josie. <laughs> Uh, my longtime partner at It's Happening Out. She uh, is uh, not here tonight. Uh, by the way, a little secret. She's running for the mayor of Wilton Manor. She has a lot of bubbles and pearls. And we wish her all the luck and a uh, lesbian that we all really admire. Next, we're going to catch up uh, tonight with news from Hollywood and the world of entertainment with our celebrity hot topics. And our topic tonight is about LGBTQ ally Rihanna. She is celebrating the ball culture and body positivity with her new brand mm -hmm. called Savage X Fente. It's a fashion show on Amazon that you can watch now. She's launched this. It launched October 1st. Rihanna has taken fashion to a whole new level of LGBT acceptance with her Fenty fashion show on Amazon Prime. With LGBT 
uh, LGBTQ stars like India Moore and Gigi Good and Shea Coulee and more. It was an iconic night of looks mm. and performances that brought the diversity of our community home to many. Very important because she is a black woman representing the black community and very important because one of the principal items that she launched in the line was men's underwear. And uh, we uh, are going to show you something about it. Watch this. This brand oh is God. going to kill. Lord, that. kill. How positive wow. that was. Yeah, I, I was going to say, love what do y'all think? Uh, I love wow. Rihanna. I'm. I come from a Caribbean background, and she and I are the same age. It is. A, it's very inspiring to see somebody out there on a global scale doing what she's doing and including everybody. Yeah. Like she's amazing, and I've seen her live five times. I love her. Mm. And Any the other looks thoughts? were all sexy too. Ooh, what a star-studded sta uh, cast that is. That's yeah. amazing. I, I, I couldn't keep up reading all the names. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I yeah. saw um, a tease of the underwear line, and it's it's like breathtaking. And one, by the way, one interesting thing um, I mentioned uh, because uh, coming from the African American community, uh, this is really a big a uh, big event of her embracement of um, the LGBT community from her. And she originally comes from Barbados. Mm -hmm. And interesting in the news in the last um, in the last three months, Barbados has reached out in COVID and all of the things going on in America to say, LGBTQ community, if you want to come to Barbados and become a citizen of Barbados, mm -hmm. we will issue really? you citizenship in Barbados if you come because of our embracement of your community. That's where Rihanna is from. I've been multiple times. Love well, depending on the outcome of the election, I may take her up. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we always like to, uh, at this moment, take a uh, give recognition to one of our big sponsors, and that is the Best Western here at I-95 here in Fort Lauderdale and Wilton Manors. Uh, happening on television network uh, broadcast uh, here and uh, all of our uh, hosts that visit from out of town uh, stay at the Best Western and um, and guests etc and it uh, when you come to South Florida and eventually all of you are going to come back to South Florida you know you are it is a great place for you to mm. stay because you're only minutes from Wilton Drive, right in the heart of Wilton Manors, the gayest place on planet Earth. We also think our uh, brand new set designer partnership uh, with um, the Sunshine Cathedral. Uh, this is the world's largest queer church in Fort Lauderdale and Wilton Manors, Florida. We joke, uh, with the possible exception tonight with um, Pastor Doug um, <laughs> sitting with us, that this is the gayest place on planet Earth. But wait, we keep the title because we've expanded it with the A and the voting embracement, which is super important. And I will say, I spilled my shot. The one <laughs> oh, shot I didn't drink. Yeah. So. You're clearly not gay, because that would <laughs> never, ever happen. <laughs> okay. Our support. Spill on aisle one. <laughs> yes, the spill on aisle one. Uh, yeah, we, we need some paper towels, David. You That's heard? right. I got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Our support of their Sunday celebration is the largest LGBTQ religious broadcast. Is it strange oh, that they, that Doug would spill it while I'm talking yeah. about the Sunshine <laughs> Cathedral? It's a little, little strange to me. Uh, the world. It's the largest religious broadcast on. in the world every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, and it's completely live. We encourage you to tune in. Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Watch this.
I'm John Buckley from Unity Coalition in Celebrate Orgullo, and Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. He is, he is a beautiful person. That's my job. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Give him my number. Uh, we'd also <laughs> like to thank <laughs> our set. Uh, it's designed by Concepto Modern Living here in Fort Lauderdale. Our production team pays attention to many things that uh, they think are interesting. And we call this segment that we're coming uh, and going to do next called the best thing of the week. Mm. Uh, let's dive right into it. It's called, and I haven't seen this, Are You Into Power Play? Watch <laughs> this. You guys into power play? Yes. No. I am. I love power play when it comes to the bedroom. Tim, I'm a dom. Well, don't dominate me. Oh, well, Michael, I'm I don't want to be dominated. I don't want to be slapped. I don't want to be spit on, and I don't want to be yelled at. I don't know what I was saying is I'm I a... don't want to overpower somebody, and I for sure don't want somebody to overpower me. But Dom bottom. Oh, Todd. Yep. So you're an aggressive bot. You think I go to the gym and work out just for nothing? So you like to pick up your guys and toss them around and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I like to aggressively pick men up and then throw them behind me so they can f me in the ass. I don't like aggressive sex. I'm an animal. I like to ride the line between sane and insane. Nope, not me. I once had a guy's face this close to my face right before sex say to me, Do you like it rough? And I said, no, mother or why the hell would I want for you to destroy my anus? It's power play. It's not real. Well, why do we have to play? Why don't you give me the real you in the bedroom, okay? Give me the real you. So if someone's a florist in the streets, you want a florist in the sheets. Exactly. I don't want to have dinner and drinks with a florist and then go to bed with the executioner. I don't like surprises. Well, I'm a down top. Well, that's a surprise. Well, I do like sub bottoming and sub topping and down bottoming. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're a switch. Mm -hmm. Explain. Well, it depends on the partner that I'm with. Sometimes I like to be submissive or dominant. So you're verse. What be is Isn't every guy verse? Ooh, power play ain't got nothing to do with anal, you dumb bitch. If I'm on top, I like to own that ass. <laughs> well, nobody's gonna own my ass, okay? R-E-S-P-E-C-T-M-Y-A-N-U-S. I'm always a dumb bottom. Always? Always. Always? Always! I say, um, choke me! Somebody try to choke me in the bedroom? Ooh, I would scream bloody murder. Well, ideally it wouldn't be a surprise. Yeah, I mean, you want to know what you're getting into before you actually get into it in the bedroom. I just want to have sweet lovemaking sessions with my mans, politely eat their ass, and respectfully climax together. Well, I guess that's fine. Please, talk to the hand. Is Michael good at sex? No, he sucks. Okay, yeah, whatever, who cares? Y'all could do whatever you want in the bedroom. You could choke each other out for all I care. I'ma choke you, bitch. Choke me, bro! Fuck! <laughs> oh, I wanna be the one that gets choked for once. Shh. Oh. 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 <laughs> Michael Henry, we shout out to you. We've, we've done a number of your products. Uh, oh, you're, you're very talented. What do y'all think? Uh, I can so relate. Being in the military and having soldiers and being in charge all the time and in law enforcement being in charge, I great. just love to be. I'm learning so much. Totally submissive in the bedroom. Ooh, ooh. Notes of this. I, hope you know. I don't want to be in charge. Wait, know. I'm sorry. Dude, you what did where you we eat I'm dinner. taking notes of this right now. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, where are we eating dinner? I don't want to choose. I don't want to. I don't want to do anything. I want to be there and just be there for you. Right, oh, got a sling okay. and a whip with your name all and, over it. And mm -hmm. <laughs> Jay, you're you're taking notes, but uh, more than just taking notes. Oh, I was taking notes of just what to do with our friend over there. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> our plan, shit, I just like to get into the whole thing. Whatever, I like to go with the flow. I mean, some guys you feel, all right, wow, damn, like. I could totally be the dom side on this one. And then some guys, it's like, all right, well, yeah, shit, I'll throw my legs up and you just go to town. I mean, it depends on who you're with. I'm for it, though. I'm going to need another shot. Get you know, <laughs> I, I just have to tell you, you know, uh, in Catholic Church, you uh, the the priest says, okay, three Hail Marys. Uh, oh, for me, with Doug uh, Pageant sitting at the table, I have to go, vote coming good, vote coming good, vote coming good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anything, November 3rd. November yes, 3rd. November 3rd. Vote, vote, vote. All right. Well, it's, uh, it, it's uh, a very interesting uh, video. And as I said, he does a great job. 
we want to uh, move in next to uh, what's on your mind. And I want to ask each of the hosts what is on their mind this week. But the trick is they can only use 30 seconds. If mm. you use longer than 30 seconds, I'm probably going to ring this bell. Uh, so tell us what's on your mind this week. First off, we're going to start with Doug Padgett. Mm. Well, I do spend an awful lot of time thinking about uh, November 3rd. Well, we're actually going on vacation on uh, over <coughs> Thanksgiving week, and I've been spending all of my free time trying to imagine a world after this election when uh, we're traveling with our family uh, of adult kids in, uh, in Mexico. Oh, excellent. If we can go. I don't even know that that's a thing. You can. Do, you can. I'm living Mex in a little fantasy. Mexico's right wide open. Uh, you can take it. We'll be able to and uh, 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 Kishai, what's on your mind? I would love to go on vacation, uh, but like permanently, honestly, <laughs> like there are so many places I want to go. I was supposed to be in Brazil this year. I was supposed to go to England for my family reunion and I'm in Florida. <laughs> so I would love to be there <laughs> immediately. I I'm excited. Next week, I'm walking a portion of the Appalachian Trail in North Carolina, Ooh, so I'm looking forward to it. Get it. Uh, and Jay, what's on your mind this week? To get the week over with. <laughs> in all honesty, it's been one of those weeks where it's like, can it be Friday? It's, well, I'm looking forward to Halloween. How about that? Halloween. I'll say that. All right. Yeah. And uh, Mo, what's on your mind this week? Actually, today um, is the 21st anniversary of the Matthew Shepard murder. Oh. So. Oh. So that was on my mind all day. Was, you know, we can't forget about that yep. and, you know, everything that our LGBT uh, community has gone through for years and years, you know, we can't let our guard down. You know, it's very interesting in the LGBTQ community. We report on this at Q News tonight frequently. We have made such progress over the last 20 years uh, in the LGBTQ community. But when you mentioned Matthew Shepard, I thought, oh, it's exactly the same. But now it's trans mm -hmm. women of color. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. They've, we've just moved the goalpost someplace else. Mm -hmm. It's very greatly sad. And Dr. Ty Hauser, what's on your mind this week? So I've been thinking about the Supreme Court justice uh, selection and how in the hell we're going to get around this. Um, right before I, I came on here, I saw a news flash. I think it was from the LA Times that the member of this weird cult that she belongs to, she was a handmaid. Now, what's really interesting about this is that Margaret Atwood, who wrote The Handmaid's Tale, says that um, the birds tell her the stories that she writes. So if this is true, then we are really kind of looking at a, a dystopian future as told by Margaret Atwood mm. and the birds. Mm. Well, that is a deep observation. I love that. Um, tonight on It's Happening Out, our next segment that we're going to explore is called Hot Topics. Um, we are going to explore uh, different topics and um, major topics, and it, It's Happening Out. Uh, we are going to begin by presenting My LGBTQ History Month. Did you know October is LGBTQ History Month? So to begin, watch this. Hi there, this is Dr. Ty Hauser professor at Broward College and host of Gay Town Hall. What struggles did you face related to being part of the LGBTQ community? Well, finding my fit in the LGBTQ community was difficult. Uh, many people knew me as straight, many people knew me as gay, many people knew me as somewhere in the middle. I always let people assume what they wanted to assume as I continued on with my life. There have only been about five people who have ever actually asked me my sexual orientation. Most people just assumed. In graduate school, I had a great group of friends. However, like most of South Florida, those people scattered all across the globe, and I lost that sense of camaraderie. Um, the hardest part about being gay for me when I was younger was um, trying to get through being in 13 years worth of Baptist schooling and surviving through that. Um, while being told that everyone around me thought that what I was was a sin. And uh, kind of coming through that and realizing that who I am is not a sin and that who I am is enough. Also, shame. Shame was big for me. Growing up in the Northeast, that Puritan sense of shame for one's body and one's sexuality was deeply rooted in me. I'm still struggling with it today uh, at times, but I've learned to recognize it uh, and I work, I work against it. It's been a lifelong struggle and when I was younger, I grew up in kind of 
a closed-minded town, so it wasn't really accepted. I mean, we had Confederate flags where I lived, like waving in the open. So growing up kind of hiding and always thinking I was going to be alone. But then as I got older, I kind of came to realize myself and find the community. And one community, one issue I have with the community is finding where I belong in the community. Mainly, it's mainly because, well, the, the drugs basically, and it's kind of hard to find where I fit based on like what my likes and interests are. It's so broad, so it's still kind of just finding out where I belong in there. Well, of course, as we celebrate this month, LGBTQ history, LGBTQ civil rights journey itself has been well documented. The struggles of icons such as Marsha P. Johnson, Bayard Rustin, Lori Lightfoot, uh, Stormy Della Varee, and others have been discussed by LGBTQ people around the world. However, this week we want to know about your struggles. Each story in our community is part of our LGBTQ history, and we want to honor those those whose voices aren't normally heard uh, from our community or about our community as a whole. So we remind you, as we celebrate through this month, we invite you to submit a video. Uh, just uh, talk about your LGBT experience. Perhaps it's coming out. Perhaps it was a violent incident or something along those lines and share it. You can paste it into our Facebook page or anywhere. You can send us an email and we would love to show it uh, to our national audience. Next, we are going to discuss headlines. Uh, we're going to start with a big story we've seen in the news for this past week that we want to discuss, and that is about COVID-19 hitting the White House. Watch this. I just left Walter Reed Medical Center, and it's really something very special. The doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and I learned so much about coronavirus. And one thing that's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're gonna beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And you're gonna beat it. Beat it. Wow. <laughs> this coronavirus? Week, oh, we don't have the best president. That's wow. <laughs> this week, the president has become a super spreader of COVID-19. He, so far, has put 20 White House uh, staff around him in COVID-19. He is putting the risk of all of those around him with his denial about COVID-19's effects. How long has he possibly had COVID-19? There's so many issues here. Uh, what did y'all think about what we've watched in this last seven days? I do not believe a single word this man says ever. I don't trust him and he's exhausting to no end. Yeah, I think prop the COVID thing was probably like a teenage girl saying, I'm pregnant, ooh, ooh. like give me attention, mm. but he probably isn't. And then also the, the last part, like don't let it dominate you, go live your life. Like that's a load of shit, I'm sorry. I mean, to slap in the face yeah. though, 211,000 people that have died in this country. That's right, really. In the middle of worldwide. Go make people get sick. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, over, uh, the, I'm the oldest person on this panel, surprise. Um, uh, so, just by sheer volume of years, I have seen a lot in politics. Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday yeah. um, are the three most dramatic days I have ever seen in America in terms of political leadership, especially from the president. And this includes Watergate. This includes 9-11. This includes anything else that you want. The, the, the Pentagon Papers uh, in the Vietnam War, uh, the Bay of Pigs, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, name whatever event that you want to name. Civil War. Our, uh, right. In our lifetimes, <laughs> certainly, <laughs> through our entire history, we have just gone through the three scariest days in our history. Uh, Big old and, stunt queen. <laughs> well, let's, let's call him out, too. I mean, he's clearly yeah. jacked up on steroids. He's wheezing. Yeah. He can't talk. And he's still, he's still going by, hey, we got this. Yeah. Uh, it's ridiculous. If anyone watched that, they would clearly see 
a buffoon. And, and look, the, the president is, he should be being briefed every day on a coronavirus task force. If he has to learn about the coronavirus by going to the hospital and being treated, this is a guy who hasn't paid any attention to what's been going on. You, you shouldn't have to learn about what the options are for treating someone with coronavirus mm. by having to go to the hospital with the coronavirus. Doug, you're really an expert on this. I mean, you've done this now for uh, for almost 10 months. You launched uh, uh, the Vote Common Good initiative in January. By the way, you're yeah, actually timing. we launched in 2018. But okay, all right. This, but, this year's this but, year's to focus on Trump has been this year. Right, the focus on yeah. on Trump in January 2020. Yeah. Great timing, by the way. It was a great time to plan a national. <laughs> tour um, yeah, perfect time uh, so, for live in-person events yes exactly so <laughs> you you are as close to an expert on this subject of watching it as as we have why is this not it, it's crystal clear to all of us sitting here at the table why what's holding that 40 percent back why 40 to 47 percent why yeah, I think a lot of them really don't feel like they have another option, right? They, they have been, I, I sat in a, in a room full of proud boys last week, surrounded by them, talking about these issues. You're surrounded by them right now. They have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, the takeover of, uh, of the proud boy hashtag by the gay community it was, was one of the great, genius. great yeah. genius moves. Genius. But these people are literally so worried about some imaginary takeover of capitalism that they think as bad as Donald Trump is, he's better than the alternative. It's the, it's the only thing, no one defends him. L literally, I, we've, I've talked to thousands of people. No one defends him. Every time it's a game of what about -ism. <laughs> What about Joe Biden? Well, what about Hillary Clinton? Well, what about, and then some QAnon kind of business and nonsense. But look, we all don't trust anything that comes out of the president's mouth, I'm with you. And millions of people don't trust anything they see on the news. We really have an entire culture in which Donald Trump in the last four years has made lying an art form. So everyone is pretty sure that anything they hear isn't the truth. Yeah. And this is going to be something that has to be dealt with after this because we can't have a civilization you know, if no one believes anything they hear from it. I'm curious. That, that, that resonates so clearly to me. I'm, I'm curious from your perspective because you really have become the professional eye in the last 10 months, the defeat of Donald Trump. It's crystal clear in the Christian community, in the, in the broad spectrum community, in the LGBT community, the defeat and change of what has happened over the last four years. With all of the cynicism and terrible things that we have watched, I just said for my lifetime, I just went through this week the three worst days in American history of my lifetime. Yep. Do you have optimism of what's going to happen November 3rd or are you scared? No, I'm, yeah, I'm f quite frightened actually, but I'm also really optimistic. But I have to confess, I was optimistic four years ago today when the Access Hollywood tape came out. I thought people of good conscience, I thought people of good moral uh, standing were going to say, we just can't stand with the man any longer. But there seems to be very little that will keep some people from ever leaving him. What it's going to take is for the people who sat it out. We just did a big poll of religious voters and people have moved away from Donald Trump. The biggest movement that's going to cause his defeat are those people who sat it out and those people who voted third party. Mm. And it was an 11% move among white evangelicals and white Catholics who sat it out in 2016 who all mm -hmm. went to Biden this time. This is going to be an election of people who don't choose third party but choose to vote for Joe Biden in this election. It, and look, he may not be the perfect candidate and he may not solve all the problems in this country there is no perfect candidate but he There's shouldn't no be the problem candidate. but right now we have the same thing we have a lot of people who i call well, the bernie bombers the people who are upset that bernie's not in the elections yeah. they're gonna vote for trump i met somebody like this the other day someone part of the lgbtq community who looked at me and was like oh well too bad biden's gonna lose because bernie's not in i'm voting for trump and it's bye yeah it's like and ha yeah. you can't even explain to these people like well why are you voting against the community you're for? Like, why are you going with someone who doesn't care about you? Uh, uh, Jay, you're a, a millennial, right? Yeah. Okay, a millennial um, who, it, I mean, it's no secret. I, I apply lots of pressure to millennials. I, it's, it's a common, consistent voice of mine of challenging millennials in the LGBTQ community. You just hear Jay on the observation that was just made. Let me succinctly answer that that young LGBT person's 
um, observation. You will lose because the Supreme Court will legislate away in judicial understanding all of your rights. The pres uh, Pence could be the president because um, uh, Donald Trump in COVID is 74 years old. Something could happen to him and Pence become president. And the Supreme Court is going to regulate. Alito and Thomas this week said, let's revisit gay marriage. Mm -hmm. What are they going to <laughs> revisit? Mm -hmm. Repealing it. Mm -hmm. reinterpreting the law not gonna happen that's what's going to happen to your friend Jay this he's is coming going from the same man that oh, it's not my friend. No, marriage. I don't want friends like that yeah and well I, I, I'm be illegal. that's what our answer is to that. yeah yeah and what does Pence do exactly anyway can someone tell me <laughs> well he suggests what he's told <laughs> number Boys, one women. thing for our community is he suggests um, uh, Keisha are you gay I'm queer okay all Very. right you're queer um, uh, Governor Pence said that was a choice. You made a choice. Yep. He His will face say, is a choice. He'll Ooh, say, fuck. you are African American. That is not a choice. But you being queer is a choice. That is Vice mm -hmm. President Pence. Yeah. I still would like a resume or like, just what does he do? Yeah. What is his purpose? <laughs> I have yet to see it. I and would at like head to of the see COVID it. task force. Out of the White House. 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 Out away task from the White House. Done a great job there. All right. Well, we can see. It's been a dramatic week, and COVID will continue to follow it. And speaking of that, happening on television network, including Queer News Tonight, is going to sponsor the national LGBTQ Vote 2020 debate and SmackDown on Friday, yes. October 16 at 7.30 p.m. It's going to be live, both in person and virtually to the nation. Watch this. Well, this debate is going to feature some of the greatest LGBTQ conservative Trump voices in America from hashtag walkaway and Americans for Trump, including their founder, Brandon Strzok, who was in row five at President's uh, White House Rose Garden acceptance speech. They will debate the vote 2020 issues that affect the LGBT community against liberal hosts from Gay Town Hall, including Sunshine Cathedral. Cathedral's Reverend Dr. Darrell Watkins, our own tonight, Dr. Ty Hauser, and somebody who identifies as them, Taisha Best. I can't wait for Brandon Strzok and Taisha Best to get together in <laughs> conversation. Al, I've been thinking about my strategy on this, and I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go with I'm going to hit on Brandon until he breaks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you can participate in person at this event uh, being held in the gayest place on planet Earth here in South Florida, or you can participate in the event live virtually. It will be an outstanding opportunity to make the final decision for November 3rd. 7% of you in Florida are undecided. Uh, and of course, that uh, translates all across America. The National LGBTQ Vote 2020 debate and SmackDown will be moderated by me. I'll do my best. Uh, six lions are coming to the table and likely it's not going to be very pretty. So as we move on, uh, we've discussed the major headline that we wanted to talk about. We're going to play Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell is a lightning round of some LGBTQ topics in the news this week and other headlines. Uh, but the trick is it can only be done in 60 seconds. Uh, so on each topic, I'm, uh, when we expire our 60 seconds, you're going to hear that bell and we're going to move on no matter where any of these hosts are in conversation. Everybody understand? 
agree to our rules. Mm -hmm. Very good. No idea. Headline number one. <laughs> Eric Trump seems to say he's a member of the LGBT community, which is what he said on Fox News. What do y'all think? Lies. Mm -mm. No, thank you. We don't want. Return to sender. Send it back. Keep them on your team. Yeah, I don't want it. <laughs> no. no. Oh, I don't know. I think I wouldn't say no. It's like a Furby. If you feed Woo! it at midnight, it'll turn to a troll, man. You don't want that. <laughs> a Furby. It's not a Furby, a Gremlin. He needs a little coaching. Does he, not the safest. Does he need a dominant? Because that could work for Woo! him. Eric Woo! Jr. is a Furby. Oh, I'm going to think about that <laughs> for a week. You know, interesting, he was on Fox News. You're watching it right now. And he basically said, I'm a part of the LGBT community. That's an exact quote. He came back three hours later and tweeting oh wait maybe I misspoke a little yeah. uh, I'm happily married uh, but and tried some and so are deal men yes exactly <laughs> that's right uh, isn't it funny that we are so revulsed by him uh, that we don't even want him as a member of the LGBTQ we have enough <laughs> <laughs> bye girl we're done bye girl, girl. <laughs> alright headline number two this week Pabir Vitar yes! and Gloria Groove make history as the first drag queens to cover mm. Vogue. Wow. Brazil, thank you for Pablo Vitar and Gloria Groove. Thank you, Brazil. <laughs> Eu te amo muito. <laughs> thank you. Well, and thanks to Vogue, I mean, always being progressive and pushing the envelope, it's, it's time. Uh, I'm curious, are, are all of y'all familiar with these two drag queens? I don't know anything yes, about Yes, I love that. Brazilian music. Pablo actually headlined Winwood Pride last year. Ugh. You want to see some performances? Watch those two. You know, from a marketing standpoint, interesting note, of course, I was involved with RuPaul's Drag Race for years. These two queens combined have the greatest social media presence on the planet. Mm. Yeah. They dwarf every queen in the United States in their social media presence. It's very, very interesting. And it's a nice slap in the face to that nationalist asshole they got for a president. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Love that. How do you really feel, Mo? Uh, right. <laughs> Headline number three in Saved by the Bell. The Saved by the Bell. 43% of LGBTQ mm -hmm. have experienced workplace discrimination. Mm -hmm. Almost half of us have been discriminated in our jobs, a new survey shows. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike Pence says that you have you should be fired if yeah. you're if you're gay. We made uh, a choice. Yeah. Who asked him? Um, but you know, I believe it. I experienced it at several jobs in the past and it's an unfortunate reality. Mm -hmm. However, you can't fire us for being ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord. Well, being in the military, the trans community, I mean, they were, it's one of the first things Trump did was attack yes. the transgender community in the military. Yeah. So. When you, uh, you were Army, Army, I believe? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mo has served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and you've just recently retired from the, uh, yes. the Army. Congratulations, thank and thank you for your service, especially your LGBTQ service, because mm -hmm. uh, when you went in, it was much, much tougher, obviously, than yep. it is uh, today. I'm curious, did... Did you find uh, uh, discrimination all the way through, even after uh, the changes? Uh, were you always, if you would have been out, and then even after you came out, was there always discrimination? Well, I came out um, as soon as Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed back mm. in 2010, 11-ish. Um, none of my coworkers believed me. They thought I was joking. Um, mm. And I guess I was a very seasoned soldier, so I really didn't get a lot of flack. Um, got a little bit, but um, I worried about the younger, the privates coming out and stuff, you know, trying to prove themselves. They're going to have to work twice as hard to prove themselves as soldiers and, and the, um, the women as well. Um, there was a, a lot of resistance. It's the NFL culture and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because in the locker rooms, you know, you'd work, go and shower, and all the straights were acting way gayer than I've seen most of my gay friends at a nightclub, <laughs> right. you know, at three in the morning. Right. Yeah. But the, and that's when I used to joke around with them before I came out. The minute I came out, I was like, whoa, I can't joke around with these guys in the shower anymore because now it's going to be a sexual harassment yeah. Um, yeah. issue. And, and I'm curious, Ty, when are you coming out? Uh, when are you uh, going to do that? <laughs> And Jay, I, uh, I'm curious for you, as a millennial, have you experienced discrimination in the workplace? Oh yeah. You have? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. Either it's people 
So they talk to me and they don't think I'm gay. Shocker. So, and they'll talk to me and they'll make remarks about other people who, like other, wherever I am, like other people who are coming in and they were gay or look at that person, they're like, they're this or whatever. And so, I mean, they don't experience, they don't say it directly to me, but it still is one of those things where it's like, well, damn, if you didn't, if you, if you, I didn't tell you I was gay and you didn't know, then you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so exactly. My favorite was like, oh, that's so gay. And I'm like, do you mean by fabulous it's yeah. gay or <laughs> gay? Yeah. yeah. So, and you know, there's a lot of people who are really taught that they're supposed to make workplaces difficult for gay people. Yeah. That that's, it's not like this is happening by accident. There's a whole culture that says, mm -hmm. so you don't show that you are approving you need to make things more difficult yeah people. absolutely well i clearly i gave a lot more than <laughs> 60 seconds but it's a very important new survey um uh, that we're affected headline number four in say by the bell and our last one uh and that is uh, the world's largest lgbtq employer has a massive covid 19 layoff we're talking about disney are gay days over Gay days are never over. Every day is gay. But in the in the case of this, I think we need to prioritize our health and wellness over amusement parks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't it, believe they've opened. Yeah, I'm surprised about that. But again, this could have been prevented yeah. if we would have mitigated this early on. You know, like, like look at Germany; their numbers are a lot less, uh, a lot less deaths than England. You know, and they got more population. It's like we dropped the ball this government dropped the ball and everybody's paying for it now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right all right well let's move out of let's move out of uh, saved by the bell and let's play another game and this one uh, i'm sure uh, doug uh, pageant is just going to love uh, it's called shag mary chop Yes. Now, we always remind everybody, we have some new host, uh, uh, guest hosts with us tonight. We used to play this game called Fuck, Mary Kill. Mm. <laughs> and when we launched the show, everybody's heard of this game that way. Uh, we didn't realize that in one of our first Fuck, Mary Kills, we thought it would be hilarious to s choose uh, Donald and Donald Jr. and Eric and force uncomfortably all of our hosts <laughs> in picking until uh, Facebook immediately pulled us down and Secret Service goes, uh, what are you talking about? And so now we play Shag, Mary Chop. And it's a completely <laughs> brand new game that we have <laughs> invented. And Chop, as in in the ballroom community, when you walk and they don't live for you, you're out. You're out. Not chop as in machete or anything. Yes, right. Oh, okay. Okay. All, right. <laughs> All right. So our hosts are going to be asked who and why and what and what they want to do with three different people. So let's play Shag, Mary, Chop. Tonight we are celebrating fall. It's October. And of course, that means sweatpants. And so we're going to celebrate fall in sweatpants with Sam Vass. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Hi, son. Nice. And Frankel Super. Gyrate, baby. Come on. <laughs> and Rod Gardner. Good lord. Step on my back. All right, let's Go. play uh, uh, Shag Mary Chop. I am oh. definitely saving Doug Pageant to last. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with uh, Keyshai Chad. Keyshai, who are you uh, shagging? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm shagging Sam because I love booty so booty. much. Booty, all right. So much. And uh, and who are you going to? Uh, uh, who are you going to marry? That's going to be Frankel or Rod Gardner. <laughs> okay, um, you know what? Where's the chocolate one? Um, hold on, wait. Rod Gardner. The, hold on. The chocolate okay, hold on. One. Chocolate, I will shag chocolate. Rod I'm Gardner. marrying Sam. I'm chopping Frankel because the, as a dancer, he's a little offbeat. He's a little offbeat <laughs> for me, for my liking. All right. And uh, um, uh, selecting Rod, that, that wasn't racist or anything. I'm just making sure we're... <laughs> <laughs> no, I just look like I want him. Literally, I want him to like be my chiropractor. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> okay. Please, just right. hold me. Uh, Jay, let's go to the millennial. What does uh, Jay want to do? Who are you going to shag? Let me get a replay again. Yeah, Sam, All right. Frankel, or Rod? All right, so Sam can get it. He's going to shag. Sam, you're cho choosing? Yes, yeah, Sam can shag. He shag. can get it. Okay. Frankel. Now, S Sam's going to top or bottom? Oh, uh, <laughs> sit on my face if he wants. Oh, man. Yes! <laughs> okay. And uh, what who you are you um, marrying? Frankel or Rod? Rod. Rod, I'll marry. I'm sorry. Frankel, he didn't do Wait, enough. wait. Why would you marry Rod? Listen. He looks like he can do all the foot rubs and the yes, back rubs yes. and everything. Like, Wait, you're going to marry somebody that's going to serve you? Is that what we've just... Relief. 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 Easy. Easy. Oh, right. Easy. All right. And, Fra <laughs> and Frankel is the chop. Yeah, okay. yeah he all didn't right. do good enough this time. Maybe next season. And then next season, next fall. All right. Yeah. And Mo, who are you doing? Well, that fur on Sam is absolutely delicious, so I'm going to shag him. Boy, Sam's popular tonight. Okay, yeah. and, <laughs> and uh, I'm Grankel or Rod? I'm going to marry Rod. He's closer to my age. He's just seven years younger, and hopefully he's still got some of that NFL money. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, oh now we had, oh, now you've just proved how gay you are. So, and uh, that means that uh, Frankel is Fra out? Yeah, Franco. Mm. Frankel, super, yeah. Sam Bass is really quite mm, pretty. Mm -hmm. um, now let's go to the thirstiest person on our panel tonight, <laughs> uh, Dr. Ty mm -hmm. Hauser. I mean, uh, I think I got to bag Rod oh because God. he just looks like he would be a really good time <laughs> for about three or four hours. I thought you were going to say minutes. <laughs> I think I'm going to marry Frankel though because I could ride that booty all, you, all my life. Really? All my right. life. Frankel. So, sorry, Sam. And so that means uh, Rod Gardner is out. So did I get that right? No, no, no. no. Oh, I'm Sam saying, is Sam, out. Sam is out. You're, uh, Sam is out? Wait, I know, it's right? a difficult thing. Can we, can we play Sam one more time? He doesn't time? like to share. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got it. Now, uh, when we invited uh, Doug Pageant and um, uh, Vogue Common Good to come to South Florida, he and agreed to do what's happening out in the promotion of the event on Thursday, October 8th. Yep. Yep. I am pretty sure in his entire career, he has never been in a moment just quite like this. Is that true? I, I would imagine that's true. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I would have forgotten this one. Please, I hope your children are watching uh, at this moment. <laughs> yes, right. All right, so you're playing along with us as the A in LGBTQA. Yes. Uh, so we mm. take that right off the table, but that doesn't mean we can't make the jokes. Doesn't mean you can't make the jokes. Exactly. Look, Doug, if, if being in a new environment is the key to personal <laughs> growth and development, <laughs> oh I'm going to be a better person. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. All right, so here it comes. Who I would marry Rod. No, no, okay. we're starting with shagging. <laughs> okay. Who are you shagging? I, I like it. Uh, I guess that would be. Well, I already know what I'm going to do. I, the two I'm comfortable with. Shagging, I guess it, by default, it ends up being Frankel. Frankel, you're shagging. And yeah, now, but that's I'm just curious cool. from your from your eye, because uh, you don't have the queer eye. Right. For, um, so why would you shag him? Well, only because I, I, I know I'm going to cut Sam and marry Rod. So that sort of leaves this this third option, which I think a lot of people feel stuck with in their, in their shagging. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, basically... <laughs> <laughs> you got your very uh, uh, Okay, and and who did you tell us you're going to marry? A uh, Rod. You're going to marry Rod, and why? He's got Rod? that great smile right Look, at the end, right? Part. I mean, he does this he whole little thing, and then there's yeah. that little break, and Bro. you're like, oh, that yeah. seems like the kind of guy you could you could spend your. And time I'm right curious there. for an A in the LGBTQA community. Um, uh, what do you think about football money? <laughs> 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 well, I just hope it doesn't come with you know the. The head condition that comes with earning football money. Yeah. All right. And your <laughs> chop reminds me of my chop. My chop would be Sam. Sam. It's okay. Come on over here, Sam. Yeah. yeah I'll I was going to say good, you definitely proved you're the A in the LGBTQA. All right. So that is. Well, I will say I'm a big fan of sweatpants. So it's, yeah. It's oh wait, really were we talking about sweatpants? I don't, know. I don't think the whole anybody thing started, out we of the started it that way, and <laughs> nobody else. And the A in LGBTQA brings us back to sweatpants. He's the only one. That's right. All right. So we learned a lot.
All right. It was a buffet. Uh, so we are uh, at the end of the show. And before we end, we always like to show the host and uh, the nation. Uh, our One of our big sponsors is Jet's Pizza. And uh, we're getting ready wow. to enjoy uh, Jet's Pizza. Uh, I opened that box magnificently, by the way, because there's a joke that I can never open the box correctly. Uh, I, I have a box challenge. No, I'm not. But uh, that's what Does they that say. Does that make you a gold star guy? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And uh, we thank Jets Pizza uh, for uh, our sponsorship and uh, uh, with It's Happening Out. Before we leave tonight, we're going to ask all the hosts to uh, have an opportunity to say good night. And and we are going to start with Dr. Ty Hauser. Well, I would like to say good night, my fellow uh, queer folk across the world. Um, it was fun being on the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, make sure if you're an American citizen, you have requested your ballot. If you're not in your state, make sure that you vote either early or in person and remain socially distant. And, and can I add, just for the benefit of Donald Trump, vote often. Yeah. Vote often. <laughs> uh, Mo. I'm going to say good night, America. Uh, it's great being on the show. Remember, we are all Americans, every single one of us, white, brown, Latino, Asian, gay, straight. There's not one just group of Americans. Our president's supposed to represent every single one of us. So let's remember we're all brothers and sisters in this. Lovely sentiment. And uh, from uh, Jay Rodriguez. So good night, America. I had fun tonight. Same thing. Get out and vote so we're not in the same like shit show we're in now four years from now. Or, or it doesn't get worse. I mean, because I don't want to leave the country. Please. I do. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Barbados. Barbados. Yeah, I, know. Beautiful I, I remember that. <laughs> and uh, we're going to uh, say uh, goodnight. Remember to celebrate or orgullo. Uh, and uh, we're right in the full uh, s swing of the Hispanic and uh, Native uh, American, uh, the indigenous uh, population uh, pride festival. And I have to say, I'm patting myself on the back. Uh, Kishai has an unusual name. Yes. And he has threatened me within an inch of my life of making a mistake and we've gotten through the entire show and I didn't make a mistake a single time. I'm proud of you. Exactly. Thank you. And yeah. so uh, Kishai, your opportunity to say good night. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Yes, everybody who is eligible to vote, please do so. Also, go to CelebrateOrgullo.com and get more information on our festival. This is for you all. Hopefully, we give the gays everything they want. Um, and we can be viewed on YouTube and Facebook. There's so much happening. It ends on the 14th, the 15th. We have a grand finale on the 14th. I will be there. I will be also doing a dance video with John Buckley on th this su coming Sunday. So please celebrate orgullo.com. Thank you all so much. You're beautiful Excellent. and you're enough. Excellent. And of course, on Thursday night, October 8th, we are going to have uh, the rally here at the Sunshine Cathedral. You can participate uh, live in person or in virtual, uh, either way. And uh, it's called Vote Common Good, and it is designed to entertain uh, through music, uh, spoken word, poetry, uh, to get out the vote. And uh, we encourage you to uh, join us. And the executive director uh, for Vote Common Good, Doug Paget. It has certainly been a pleasure to be with you. A great night. It's debate night, but uh, my tradition also reminds us to love our neighbor and to treat your neighbor as you'd treat yourself. And look, if you wouldn't keep yourself from voting for Donald Trump, love your neighbor the way you love yourself. Go talk to your neighbor. At least this one time. you got 27 days. Have that hard conversation. Be willing to raise it. And just know there's a lot of people who don't have anyone else saying to them, you can make a different choice on election night. You can make a different choice on election night. So good night, LGBTQ America. Remember, turn in and tune in uh, every Wednesday at 8 p.m. as we bring you conversations about the topics that you won't find anywhere else. This conversation in, in uh, 75 minutes, where else would you see in America? Remember, if it's important to the LGBTQ community, you'll find it on It's Happening Out. Good night, America.